Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dadvice TV Live. And for those of you that are new, like Pat here, hey, welcome. Great to have you here, especially on one of the live broadcasts. You can post comments and ask questions about our topic, and we might be able to even answer those during the show. Now, for those of you that are new, go ahead, introduce yourself. Get to know our amazing community here on Dadvice TV. It is very positive and very supportive. And if you are new, let me introduce myself. Hey there, my name's James. I am a kidney warrior. I was diagnosed just over two years ago with stage five kidney failure. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My energy was zapped. I was not doing too good. And the doctors told me, James, you're going to need to go on dialysis. But with a little bit of luck and some dedication to diet and lifestyle changes, I was able to improve my overall health, which lifted my kidney health up because I reduced some of the burden I was placing on it by not eating all that bad food and pizza and McDonald's and Wendy's and drinking sodas, all that goodbye and I am doing better than I ever thought possible. Living a life that's not being held back by kidney disease. What I like to call kicking kidney disease to the curb. Now tonight with us, we have one of our favorite guests. You guys know her, renal dietitian, Jen Hernandez. Hey Jen, how you doing? Hi, James. Hey, everybody. I am doing wonderful. Uh, a little chilly. I said I have my giant cup of tea with me tonight, uh, but I am so thrilled to be back and I am so excited to kick off 2021 with you guys with a wonderful chat tonight about a renal diet grocery list. I have a huge free easy resource for you to grab. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. If you are new to seeing me here on Dadvice, my name is Jen. I am a renal dietitian. So I'm a registered dietitian in the United States. I'm also board certified in renal nutrition. That is what I spent the majority of my dietitian career doing is helping people with kidney disease, earlier stages, later stages, even on dialysis, take care of their kidney health. And that is what I do in plant powered kidneys. So I have my website noted above plantpoweredkidneys.com. We have a free private Facebook group that you can join for community and support. Just go to Facebook and search plant powered kidneys. And I have a very special announcement tonight. It is the final day or night <laughs> to enroll in our six week plant powered kidneys course. We have already begun. Students are already going through the course and we've had great reviews. In fact, just earlier today, I had a new review from a student who is a retired physician assistant and he was raving. He gave the course five stars, very excited about the information in there. And I felt just such beaming pride and joy that a medical professional was also in the course and saying how great it was. It just made me feel so good and makes me so much more excited for the students that are in the course right now, knowing what's to come for them. So tonight is the final time to enroll before the doors close. You can find, um, sorry, you can find registration at plantpoweredkidneys.com. There's a link at the very top of the website. You go there and enroll. Uh, it will close tonight after dad bites. So. This is the final call before doors close. And I start hitting the ground running with all the students. Yeah, for those of you who are out there who are not yet working with a renal dietitian, from my journey from a low GFR eight up into GFR in the 33s, but more importantly, getting my energy back, getting all those symptoms out of there, the secret to all of it was working with a renal dietitian and getting my diet under control and learning not how to restrict and kick food out of my diet, but how to make better choices and how to kind of control the portion so that I could almost eat what I want. I still love to eat. I always have. As a matter of fact, Jen and I were just talking before the show. I love <laughs> to eat so much in the last year. I've gained some weight. COVID has not been good to my poor little gut and it's not little anymore. So I've set some goals for 2021 
to start exercising. I'm actually doing it now in the morning, right after we're done with this broadcast. I'm going to grab my iPad. I'm going to go watch an episode of The Crown while I'm walking the fat away and getting my heart pumping on my treadmill here at the house. But a renal dietitian is by far the best thing you can do to help you learn how to eat better for your health, which then it helps your kidneys by reducing some of the burden you're you're putting on your kidneys. It's not gonna make your kidneys repaired, but you can improve your health and you may even be able to regain some kidney function and more importantly, get rid of some of those annoying symptoms of kidney disease. Now let's get into today's topics, you guys. Let me tell you, We've probably got at least two hours worth of material. Don't worry, we're not going two hours tonight. <laughs> we will keep it to an hour. Jen has put together an amazing blog post, which is linked in the description, which has even more information. And I know what you guys are all wanting. Where's the list? Where's the list? It's on the blog post. But we need to talk about it so you know how to use the list and how to make those right choices. And we got some great graphics to show you as we talk about some of the things that are really important that are going to help things click in your mind. You're like, aha, that's why I should pick that over that. So let's yeah, go ahead absolutely. since we got so much stuff. <laughs> I'm excited. I love food lists because I have one. And I remember when I first got it, I was like six months into trying to figure out what to do. And I got a food list and it just helped me so much as a guide to pick mm -hmm. foods. And I was like, holy cow, I can have that. Oh, I can have that. Oh, I can have that. And it just came down to kind of portion control and, and, you know, making some smart choices. And I was loving food again. So yeah. what is a renal diet grocery list? Let's start at the very basics. So when we think of the grocery list, we're thinking of, you know, everything that we need to grab for all of our meals, our snacks, our recipes, whatever we have planned. But when we put the term renal diet in front of it, it's really serving as a reminder of what we need to focus on. So if you have kidney disease, there are some chances that you have certain nutrients that you need to be more mindful of that other people who have fully functioning kidneys don't even think about. And honestly, they take it for granted, right? Like we can go down this whole tangent, but people who don't have kidney disease take for granted all the stuff that their kidneys do until it's gone. And then they're like, oh my gosh, it does all of this work. So when we think of the renal diet grocery list, we're thinking of our food, our groceries serving the purpose of taking care of our kidneys and really helping us with really good kidney health by focusing on what it is that we need to focus on when it comes to our own kidney health. So this can be something related to being careful with your potassium, being careful with your phosphorus, being careful with your protein, your types of carbs that you're choosing. There's so many different avenues and everybody is different. So even when we do talk tonight about the renal diet grocery list, remember that you're all different. Everybody's different. So everyone's grocery list is gonna come off looking a little bit different based mm -hmm. on your preferences and based on your needs. But when it comes down to it, setting yourself up with a grocery list that's focused on the renal diet is really gonna take you further in your kidney health journey because you're putting that literally in the forefront of your process of your cooking, your shopping, everything that kind of falls afterwards. Yeah, and to kind of reemphasize that we all are different. That is so, so true. Um, a lot of people ask me, James, what did you eat? If you look at what I ate, a lot of you be like, holy cow, am I allowed to eat that? I'm on a very high potassium diet, which is fairly rare for those with kidney disease, especially at the lower levels as your kidneys are starting to get bad. I got a, you know, I got some heart challenges and my body for some reason just does not hold on to potassium. So I eat quite a bit of potassium. So my diet includes quite a bit of, you know, some bananas, avocados, oranges, tomatoes to help my body. You guys, you know, the each of you out there, your potassium limit, for example, is going to be different. Some of you may have to have a low level and keep an eye on it and be, you know, more mindful 
than I am. As a matter of fact, every time I go in and I get labs, my doc's always like, yeah, you can have some more potatoes. Why don't you eat, add a few more to your to your, your diet? Make some of those little ones. Have those occasionally. And I yeah. tell them, I'm eating them. I feel like I'm eating them all the time. I'm eating potassium. And I'm always worried my labs are going to come out high. But we're just all different. And for me, I'm on a very high potassium diet. Now, you mentioned, um, you know, we got to keep an eye on not just potassium, phosphorus, protein and sodium but also you mentioned carbs um, we got to watch calories and that's really important yes. um, some people like me i'm gaining weight for some reason i'm snacking uh, and not exercising but some people you may be eating too few calories mm -hmm. and have challenges maintaining your weight or you may need to gain weight so those, you know some of those things are really important when it comes mm -hmm. to your uh your grocery list. Now, are there any of those that you would say are more important? Like, hey, these are the most important things. Is there like a certain order that you, you know, recommend for students or for kidney patients? Yes. So in the Plant Powered Kidneys course, we do each week, we go through a, a, a big topic. So week one, this week, we're going through potassium, but we also go through carbs and we go through protein as well. Uh, for one, I feel like carbs are demonized, not just in the kidney world, but really in the diets in general, that people think they can't have any carbs. And really it's about having the right amount of carbs for you and your body. And we need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates do so much for us. It, our brains fuel on carbs. That is the number one source of energy that it uses. So our body really needs that carbohydrates to fuel and to function properly. And I do worry that people, especially kidney warriors that are so worried about limit this, limit that, limit this, limit that, that's when it becomes a concern of not getting enough calories, not getting enough carbohydrates, not getting enough fat. That's such a big thing that I worry about because there's certain diet trends about not having any fat in the diet and uh, our body needs fat as well. It is literally our cell structure that requires fat. It is very, very important for our bodies to use. Now the sources and the types that can, we can kind of dive a little bit more into that, but really it comes down to making sure that you're getting enough calories, that you're getting enough or the right amount of carbohydrates. We've had other shows that we've talked about protein that you need to be aware of how much protein you need. Some people need a lot of protein and some people need very little protein. It's a huge range in the kidney world and you'll need to get that one-on-one -on -one, um, consulting to really find out the exact number, how much you should be having. But yeah, and I, it, and it, I, I'd like oh. to reemphasize one thing there um, about protein. That's one of the things that I commonly see on a lot of Facebook groups and message boards where uh, people are incorrectly telling people to really cut way, way back on it. And that can be dangerous for some people, um, such as those that have diabetes. Cutting mm -hmm. way back on carbs, way back on protein, just doing it yourself kind of without working with someone to help guide you can be dangerous. And, uh, you know, yes. I just wanted to emphasize that right there because I see it all the time. Yeah, I, I know we've talked about it before. Uh, Dr. Google, Dr. Facebook are not credentialed. They don't know what they're talking about. Anything coming from them, you've got to be, you've got to be careful with and really, really filter that information that you're getting. Um, I, 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 Facebook, I love Facebook. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. I love so it, dangerous. but it's also, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, free information, you guys, and you've got to be considerate about where it's coming from, who it's coming from. If people are providing recommendations to you, is it something they were told by who knows what and why, what the purpose was and your example of people with diabetes, diabetes is mm -hmm. the top cause of kidney problems and people with diabetes should not be severely cutting down their protein uh, because it really changes those that macronutrient balance and macronutrients are carbs fat and protein those are the macronutrients so think macro big these are the most important nutrients that our body needs and really what compromises all of the calories that we take in 
So it's very important to understand those and to understand how much is really right for you and your health situation. Yeah. And can we talk a little bit about fat? Cause that's when it comes to Dr. Google and Dr. Facebook, there's a lot of incorrect information being passed around, especially about fats for those on a renal diet, those that are looking to eat healthier for their kidneys. Right. So protein usually is a moderate restriction. Sometimes it's very restricted depending on the situation. Sometimes it's just focusing on getting the right kinds. Either way, we're already being careful with protein. Carbohydrates, also kind of a moderate situation, maybe a little bit more, but not tons. So of those three macronutrients, if we're already watching one, we're being pretty careful with the other one. The third one, we've got to be able to have some in our diet. So to say a diet can only last on two of the three macronutrients, well, let's take that three-legged stool and pull one of those legs out. You're not going to sit there for long, right? Exactly. It's not going to happen. It is a fundamental part, especially with the kidney community. You've got to have some of it. And that's where I see when people talk about, oh, I cut this, I cut this, I cut this. And then they say they're losing weight. I'm like, well, no wonder. And I've worked with so many people. So many clients have come to me unable to keep weight on because they've restricted so much food and they've mm. cut away so many things because they're hearing so many stories from different people saying, don't eat this and don't eat that. But then we get the foods back into their diet and guess what? Their kidneys are better. They're getting their weight back on and they're feeling better because they have more energy. It's a much better situation. So I stuck that third leg back into their stool. Yeah. And if you, and that, that three-legged stool is a good example. You take one leg off. I could sit here and balance for a little bit. I can't do it all day long. It's not something that's long-term and it's mm -hmm. something that I'm going to quickly get tired of. I'm going to dislike and eventually mm -hmm. I'm going to fall off of it. And diets are mm -hmm. kind of like that. You need the right balance. And that's really what, to me, what the secret has been to my diet is finding the right balance and balance is selecting things, making better choices and it's choices, not eliminations, choices, and it's portion control. Just find that right balance. Mm -hmm. And I am happy. I can stick to my diet as long as I'm not snacking, which is just a, you know, it's just me getting lazy and <laughs> giving into <laughs> temptation. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, but the, the fats, I wanted to quickly talk about the fats. Um, what are the types of fats and can you touch on how those are, you know, should be incorporated or not into a renal diet? Well, there's good fats and not so good fats. So I think a lot of people are familiar with the not so good fats. Those are saturated fats and trans fats. And saturated fats are found in full fat dairy products and animal meats. So it comes from animal products. The trans fats are typically found in processed foods, cookies, cakes, a lot of things, bakery, basically bakery and, mm -hmm. and uh, carnival food, all that kind of stuff. Deep fried, those are trans fats. So saturated and trans, you really want to avoid and be super careful with a, a controversial or trendy at times saturated fat source is uh, coconut oil and coconut oil you can have from time to time but it is a very high content of saturated fat it, the majority of the fat in it is saturated fat so it's not something that you really want to uh use routinely it's not it, it really shouldn't be your go-to because the primary source of fat in coconut oil is a unhealthy heart artery clogging fat so those you want to be careful of now, the good ones we have are the unsaturated fats. Those are mono and poly unsaturated fats. So some examples, my personal favorites, olive oil and avocado. Oh, yeah. I actually did a quick video this morning when I did a potato hash, boiling potatoes. You can double boil them and get out potassium. I did and not then, see that video. I'm guessing it's on your, your Facebook group, Plant Powered Kidneys. No, it's on my social media. So I post a lot. Oh. If you just find me on Instagram or on Facebook, uh, so I think on Facebook, I'm still Jen Hernandez and then Instagram it's plant.powered.kidneys. So 
you can find me there. And I posted that video showing all the steps of what I did to make my potato hash for breakfast. And I used avocado oil to get the potatoes nice and crispy. And it was so good. It was awesome. really good. So <laughs> avocado oil, one of my great go-tos. Um, you could also do canola oil. That's another kind of controversial one, but it's still a plant-based oil that's considered heart healthy. So that is another option as well. Peanut butter, peanuts, different nuts and seeds, those have monounsaturated fats. So those are heart healthy and good for us to include. Um, flaxseed, flaxseed oil, make sure your flax seeds are ground and not whole. If you buy them whole, that's perfectly fine, but run them through your spice blender, run them through your, your uh, coffee uh, grinder, something to break them up because we will not digest them whole. So don't pay for expensive poo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and right. those, those fats you just mentioned, the oils, mm -hmm. you know, good for your heart and yes. just reemphasizing there's some Facebook groups that say, Hey, no oil. Those groups right. do not have doctors. They do not have dietitians. They're just randomly. I don't even know why saying no oil. Um, <laughs> they don't have evidence. That's the bottom line. They don't have yeah. proof that this works across the board. So this is like me trying something and saying, Hey, it worked for me. It can work for you. But we know you guys, you, you're smart. I know you're smart. You're following dad advice. You know, that's not the case. You can't follow one person's diet and assume it'll work for everybody. So until it's evidence-based then, and I might change my tune mm -hmm. in a month, in three months, in three years, whatever the case is, if the nutrition science backs it and then says, we studied this and we found this research. But until it's researched and proven, we're not gonna go out and make these public announcements of talking about avoiding an entire macronutrient <sighs> like heart healthy fats. Yep. And the, the evidence about renal diets does change. There was just recently mm -hmm. an update to the recommendations. Uh, and that's another area where working with a renal dietitian is helpful because they're staying on top of these changes and saying, Hey, here's what we're now, we found works better, uh, for those with mm -hmm. kidney disease. So it's important to, uh, you know, I, anyone out there who's on the fence with the renal dietitian, it's by far the best thing. <laughs> now I agree, but I'm totally biased. Yeah. I love your gigantic mug. It's so big. Me too. You can't tell how big it is till you start drinking out of it. <laughs> it's like the size of my face. I oh I don't have mine here. I I have a small mug for in the morning when I need a little bit of coffee. It's not very big. But I, I couldn't drink that much coffee. I'd be up for days. Oh no. No, I'm just having, I'm having some, my favorite peppermint tea, but that is my go-to right now. Yeah. Now, um, with the, so we kind of talked a little bit about some of the things that are good in a renal diet nutrients so mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. know we're not afraid of oil when we see it on the list. Um, we're not afraid of carbs. You know, we're not trying to over restrict stuff, which is a big mistake. So many people make, and even I made it in the beginning, um, are there certain things or which things should we kind of keep an eye on on average to restrict? You kind of touched on those in the beginning. Well, it's it's still going to come down to every single person, but in talking about it, in talking about it in this generalized area, we're going to be looking at sodium. Almost everybody needs to be careful with their sodium. Uh, it is something that is everywhere. It is in everything. So you want to just be aware of how much sodium you're taking in using something like chronometer is a really helpful tool to track and see how much salt you're eating. Uh, we also want to be looking at potassium. Not everybody needs to be restricting potassium. And just like James said, some people need to have more potassium. Everybody's different, but this is something that we all need to be more aware of, especially in the kidney community. This is not something that I get a lot of people outside of the kidney community talking about potassium. They're just not aware. I'll tell you what though, almost every single, was it 98% of Americans don't get enough potassium. So I'm waiting for the day mm. that eventually everybody starts paying attention to it. And they're thinking, wow, how come I'm not getting enough potassium? So 
we are ahead of the curve on that. I think you guys are all paying attention to potassium. It is so, so important. And whatever the amount is that you should be having, it's really good to pay attention and focus on those foods, whether it's higher or lower potassium. The other one is phosphorus. So mm -hmm. phosphorus is something that we all, and I'm going to say even without kidney disease, need to be aware of because nobody benefits from added phosphates. That is oh. the type of phosphorus that's absorbed 100% into the bloodstream. This is the worst kind of phosphorus for us. And, and we have a graph here that shows yeah. the sources and how phosphorus gets absorbed. Let me bring it in on here. I'll see you guys in a moment. It's going to be on top of me. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually a shot from the Plant Powered Kidneys course. This is something that I teach in the course, talking about the different sources of phosphorus, where you find them, and how much of them they're absorbed. It's not so black and white when we're looking at phosphorus on the label as it would be like protein or sodium. So if you're looking at it on a label of, let's say, nuts, for example, only about 60% of that phosphorus that's found organically, naturally in nuts is absorbed. So the, the source of your uh, phosphorus is really important. And that's what tells us how much of it is going to impact your health. At the very bottom, those inorganic phosphates, those are found in packaged and processed foods, fast foods, restaurants. Uh, when in doubt, assume it has added phosphorus in it because it is a very easy to find for uh, food manufacturers it's an easy to find uh, preservative something that they can put in and help the food stay longer and if you think about restaurants and fast food and all of those companies they don't want to throw out their food they want us to buy their food so they want it to last longer in their stores so they use preservatives so keep that in mind when you're looking at phosphorus uh, and most importantly in the ingredient list not in the nutrition label with the calories and the fat and protein it's going to be underneath mm -hmm. in the ingredients list. That's where you find it. Yeah. And it's hidden under like 20 different versions. So you got to look for P H O S that word yes. FOSS. And <clears throat> when I first got diagnosed, you know, it, it's not labeled in there, like how much phosphorus there was. So a quick tip that I was given, which I, I used in the beginning before I had apps like chronometer and and um, all those apps um, was if I saw it listed once in the first half of the ingredients it was a no and if it was two times or more anywhere in the ingredients it was a no so my exception was it could be near the end of the ingredients listed once something has phos and it was acceptable for me to buy it um, I tried to avoid I still try today to avoid things that have added phosphorus because we absorb it hundred percent. And I'd much rather get my phosphorus from natural sources instead of all those additives. Yeah. And, and I do recommend for the majority is try your best to eliminate it entirely. Find other brands that don't use the preservatives and there are more companies coming out. They're not going to broadcast that they don't have phosphate additives because the, we are, um, we're a big community, but we're still a small community. And so companies are not marketing towards us. But uh, once you find an alternative, just keep your eye on it. Companies change their products all the time mm -hmm. without warning. So if you find something that doesn't have phosphate additives in it, don't assume that's that is going to be the case forever. So just every now and then spot check uh, in the course on week six, we talk all about phosphorus and I'm going to give homework for uh, cleaning out their pantry. And I'm going to talk with them about what to do to make sure that they're setting themselves up for good, healthy bones. Cause that's what it's all about when it comes to a good phosphorus balance. Yeah. And, and phosphorus has a connection with calcium. If one of them gets out of whack, it pulls mm -hmm. the other one out of whack, which could cause uh, brittle bones, weak bones. It could cause calcium deposits, which cause itchiness and all sorts of other issues. There's a connection there. So phosphorus is one of those ones we really do got to keep an eye on. And we don't, I, I don't think anyone ever has a phosphorus shortage unless they're malnourished. <laughs> Yeah, no, our body's really good about taking care of phosphorus. We store phosphorus in our bones. We we will get enough. And our diet, the, the dietary amount, our body can adjust how much of it we absorb. So 
That's another job of the kidneys is getting rid of the stuff we don't need and keeping the stuff we do need. So absolutely, you'll get you'll get plenty. Um, but it's definitely it's something that I find in my experience with people with high phosphorus. It turns into this. Oh, my number's a little bit high. Oh, whatever. I feel fine. Everything's fine until it's not fine. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to the not fine point, it's it's too late. It's it's if you're symptomatic, that is a scary time because your arteries can be calcified. Oh. You can have you have a higher risk for heart attack and stroke because you have this extra phosphorus buildup. These little phosphorus crystals that are floating through your blood, looking to stick into your soft tissue, and that's what makes you itchy. It gets into your eyes. I've had patients who have um, bumps around their eyes from yeah. all the phosphorus that's depositing around them. It, it is just a mat. Uh, it's a it's a nasty situation. Yep. So now we've talked about the nutrients and you know the importance of them and how we you know we're not looking to go to zero on everything, and mm -hmm. we're looking at. Um, when it comes to things like phosphorus, where does it come from? Is it an additive or is it natural? What now if we're getting ready to go grocery shopping, what do we need to do to prepare before we go grocery okay. shopping? So when you prepare to go grocery shopping, you really want to have a plan. You really want to know what you're going in and what you're getting. So make your grocery list, plan out your meals. Uh, that's something that, that my husband and I do every weekend. We're writing out, okay, what did our schedule look like? So he knows tonight he's going to be making dinner. He's responsible for that because I have plans. <laughs> so we, we write all of these things out and we talk about what it's going to look like and then just say, okay, well, what sounds good or what do we want to have? And then as we're going through and creating our meals, we're at, we're checking the pantry, we're checking the fridge, we're writing on to the grocery list what we need to get in order to make those meals. So you really want to make sure that you go in and have that plan in mind. I personally love to write my grocery list out in the order of which I go through the store. I hate mm -hmm. going back and forth from one aisle and then down all the way to the other one. So once I'm really, once I find a grocery store I like, and that's my go-to store and I know the layout, that's always how I layer or how I list my groceries is by, so first for me, it's always produce. Mm -hmm. And then it is the bakery, breads, any of the canned foods or the canned vegetables. And then it goes into any of the refrigerated stuff and then it finishes up with the freezer. And I know when I get to the freezer, I'm getting ready to get out of there because now I have cold stuff that I got to get into my freezer. Um, but having it listed in that order will really provide a sense of more enjoyment, I find, in grocery shopping. It's just having a better plan. Yeah. And and when I first got started, my dietitian said, James, start on the outside. Shop the exterior. Mm -hmm. That's where those fresh veggies are all the good stuff yep. that's where the deli the bakery that's where the frozen stuff is spend most of my time on the outside of the of the grocery store the least amount of time in that center section which is the danger zone where the boxes are that are loaded with preservatives and artificial things because you know things aren't meant to sit on the shelves some of them i, I look at something this weekend it was still at a two-year shelf life from the i was like yeah. two more years that's crazy i bought some well, pears say, and they just lasted a few days oh yeah i mean i will say there is a caveat to that and that would be dried beans so dried yeah. beans are really really good for us and when you get them dry and you cook them from dry you have total control over the sodium you know there's no added phosphorus in there and they last forever so mm -hmm. dried beans, dried grains, those are my, um, that's the exception to the rule. I do, I definitely agree. There's a lot of things in those aisles that are not the greatest option. The sodas, the candies, the treats, the processed foods that can stay on the shelf for an ungodly amount of time and still be servable. And then it makes you question like, what in the world is in this to make it last for so long? The yeah. longer the ingredient list, the more questions you should have basically. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And there shouldn't be too many. So it's not that we're avoiding the middle of the store. We're just spending less mm -hmm. time there and right. more in that fresher, right. the better, healthier, more close to nature, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're being more selective on 
the things that we know are going to do more good for us. It's that old phrase, um, eat to live, don't live to eat mm -hmm. that I know a lot of people pick up. So that that's really what we're looking at focusing on is eating to live, eating for kidney health. That's what this is all about. Yep. Oh, and Deb says she shops online at Walmart and does grocery pickup. Hey, Deb, I just ordered a bunch of food today from Amazon Fresh. Tomorrow at 11 to noon, it'll be delivered here. I love that because I can go pick stuff. I look at all the labels. I'm mm -hmm. not tempted by those displays mm -hmm. that look so attractive or like, oh, that bag of Cheetos won't hurt just one bag. None of that. I don't have to worry about any of that when I do it online. So I love the idea, yeah. Deb, especially during yeah. COVID of shopping online. Though I do miss the walking the aisles. That used to be a lot of steps for me. Now, yeah. You, you mentioned produce. There's lots of, tons of vegetables, tons of fruit. Oh my gosh. I know we can't possibly great. dive into everything. That we I know. I was, I was like, let the list. I'm like, it's too big to even show on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. And you guys know, we've talked about this before. The, the, the one thing, like top thing I'm going to say you can't have, and I'm not doing this because I'm evil. I'm doing this because I care is star fruit. You can't yeah. have star fruit. It has a neurotoxin that you can't mm -hmm. filter and it will, it, it can potentially kill you. So star fruit is on the do not ever have list when you have chronic kidney disease. Everything else, licorice, I know we have like a second, a close runner up. I know some yeah. people do have it. Black licorice, it, real black licorice, right. not the fake stuff. Right, right. Black licorice or licorice root. I talked about that in, in on, on social media recently with tea that you want to be careful for. But everything else, like, if you want it in your diet, if it is something, I have a wonderful client who has a, a lovely, a, a strong Italian background, actually Italian and Lebanese. And we were talking during the holidays about a lot of his holiday traditions and the things that just mean so much to him because a lot of food is connected to culture. So we talked about that and, and what he would be able to have, even though he's been completely vegan and plant-based for over three months, four months. And that's something where we can give some leeway to because of the situation. So there's always a way to work around and include it in the diet. It's just a matter of having that guidance, having somebody there to kind of help make sure that you get it and talk with your nephrologist. If you have a dietitian, you know, working one-on-one -on -one privately with a dietitian, that is the gold standard. Absolutely. Yep. The gold standard of where you can get those kinds of questions answered. And, and for those that are asking, there is a list you can go and you can print out or cut and paste and put into, if you have a certain app that you like to use on the plantpoweredkidneys.com website. As a matter of fact, I'm going to paste the link to it, the direct link in the, the chat right now on YouTube and Facebook. Um, but if you go to the Plant Powered Kidneys website, there's a blog link at the top. And you click on that, and right now that is the top article is grocery shopping and a, a, a massive, massive list of foods to choose from. And remember, it's going to come down to portion control. We all have different right. requirements, but you're going to be shocked at what's on there. Um, it's just too big to put on the screen. The, the font would be so small. It would cover the entire screen, and I probably still couldn't fit all the words on here. <laughs> <laughs> but we got lots of vegetables, lots of fruits. Now, let's talk about breads, grains, and cereals. Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. those something that can fit into a renal diet? Absolutely. We know carbohydrates are important for our brain, for our body, for energy. It oftentimes comes down to what kind you're choosing. So whole wheat, whole grain, we've said before, you can have it in the diet. It is typically higher in phosphorus and potassium. The phosphorus hopefully is organic naturally in the wheat and not added to the bread, but you'll have to read the ingredient list for that. The other thing that I really think of when it comes to this category is sodium. Bread is listed as one of the top saltiest foods in our diet because it hides salt so well. And if you've ever made bread from scratch, if you've ever made anything like that, and you see the teaspoon, teaspoon and a half that gets added to it, you're thinking, wow, like that's a lot. And 
I all the time find bread that can easily get into 200, 300 milligrams of sodium per slice. So it really, yeah, it can really add up fast. So that's, to me, that's the number one concern to focus on is sodium. And then a close second is the phosphate additives and then the potassium, if you need to learn potassium. I'm not as concerned with potassium in grains most of the time because there's many other sources in our diet that have potassium, more potassium. So uh, those, those are definitely it, but you absolutely can. You can enjoy your morning bagel, add some jam on it. You know, you can, you can absolutely have it in your diet and it's not going to deter anything. It's going to make you happier and your kidneys will still be happy. Yep. And for those that have a bakery nearby, here's something that I did. Uh, so looking for bread, I was looking at the sodium, trying to find a low sodium bread here locally, which can be challenging. Cause like you said, some of them are really packed with it. And my yeah. family doctor said, go talk to a baker. I bet you they can make you bread that's low sodium and it'll probably cost about the same as going to the store and buying it. And that's what I did. I would let him know when I would come pick it up. It was every Saturday. And he would make me a loaf for it's a unique looking loaf of bread that was mm. low sodium for, and it's fresh. He just made it. I'm going there and it was about the same price as going That's to Walmart price. and buying a loaf of bread that was all chopped up in a bag loaded with sodium. Right. right. And who knows how long it's been sitting on the shelves. Exactly. It had to get made, chopped, bagged, driven in a truck, put into the where in the back, eventually taken mm-hmm. out at night, put on the shelf. Who knows how old it is? I got yeah, my stuff exactly. from the bakery and I got to pick what kind of bread I liked. And, oh, it just tasted absolutely incredible. Now, what about, so breads are good. We can work breads mm-hmm. in. We just got to keep an eye on those few things. Cereals. A lot of people I know are worried about cereals. Really? Okay. I I was just talking with a client earlier today and she said she was munching on some Chex and Cheerios. And I was like, that there sounds go. so good. <laughs> so <laughs> there are so many cereals that are available that are kidney friendly. You definitely still want to look at what is in there. What's on the ingredient list with cereals. I'm more focused on sugar because there's a lot of sugary cereals. So be careful with how much sugar is added to them. But what you could look for is finding cereals that have more fiber and fiber we know is a really healthy type of carbohydrate that helps us with our gut health, helps us feel better. So if you find a cereal that has fiber in it, that's fantastic. Yep. Awesome. And, and I actually do eat cereal. Um, Mm -hmm. I eat raisin brand, but I, okay. I, I get the one with the least amount of raisins because those raisins are completely covered in sugar. So much sugar. You can see it yeah, in the pictures I, and they promote it like it's good. Like look at all the sugar. Yeah. And um, I use some craisins. I, I actually pick out the raisins and I put my own craisins in, which are a cranberry oh raisin, no sugar on them. You know, there's from a little yeah. tiny box. I buy them for my kids for, for snacks. I just take one little box mm-hmm. of them and I mix it in there. Boom. My little mm-hmm. breakfast. I'm happy. Little almond you milk. You have a cereal process. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, Let me tell you, if I look at sugar, I think it. I, I start gaining weight just from the sight of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> And the, the raisins themselves, I've never been a fan of raisins, but I love yeah. craisins. Those taste completely mm-hmm. different. Not the flavored ones, guys. Have, oh, yeah. I, I don't get why they have to put sugar on them. It's already sweetened. It's yeah. Still, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, why is that necessary? Um, I mean, I, I love some. I, okay. So while we're on this topic, dried fruit can be super high in potassium. So if mm-hmm. you need to limit potassium, I would be careful about any of the cereals that do have dried fruit in them. James already said that he has extra potassium in his diet because of his own nutritional needs. So something like Raisin Bran may or may not be a good fit for you, Mm -hmm. but there's still plenty of others. And just like James did, if you want to still enjoy something like Raisin Bran, 
use the craisins and get a small box so that it's more portion exactly. controlled per serving. And, and it's a very it small too. box of them. And, yeah. it, and they're, they are so flavorful. And, and I love mm-hmm. foods that are like that, that are full of flavor where you don't have to add that many and you're still getting right. it, which is great. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm scrolling through your website, guys. This list of cereals is huge. Also including mm-hmm. hot cereals like mm-hmm. grits. Oh, one of my favorites is grits. I'm, I'm a Southern yeah. boy at heart. I love regular grits. Um, I also love grits floating in butter. I don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you got, I do yep. specify on there cream of wheat. I, I yep. prefer um, Bob's Red Mill because the traditional red box cream of wheat has phosphate added to it because of the iron that they added. It's, it's ferrous phosphate, I think. So again, check the labels for all of this stuff and make sure that it doesn't have those kind of additives to it. But Bob's Red Mill, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for their products, their line. I think their stuff is really good. Awesome. Let's see. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the question. Someone said, what about zucchini pancakes? I've never made pancakes out of zucchini. Um. Well, zucchini is on the list for sure. Yeah, so zucchini is great. I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I guess, because I don't know more about what is in there. I'll say chances are yes, it's probably fine. As it, once you go to the article, you'll see that is quite extensive. So I would definitely take a look at that. Um, the thing with pancakes in general, um, the baking powder that is used mm. is phosphorus. So that is something to be aware of. There is a swap using cream of tartar and baking soda. Um, I have it on my social media. I had posted it a while back during the holidays as a substitute, but um, for baking, yeah, for baking powder. I don't remember the exact exchange. I think it's equal parts, but don't quote me. We'll have to look it up. Davida has it on their website. So that is an option, but just just in that whole pancake realm, um, baking powder is 100% phosphorus. Yeah, and, and Diana said she loves that brand too, Bob's Red Mill. I've never yeah, heard of great. it. <laughs> so I don't know why certain grocery stores, they pick out these brands and they just put them in the diet food section, mm-hmm. which has a horrible connotation to me personally, because it makes it look like you're going into this, like I imagine it to be this really dark aisle that nobody wants to go down. And <laughs> like anyone, anyone watches you go down there, they're like, oh, you poor thing. Like, no, like. I wish they would get rid of that whole thing, but Bob's Red Mill seems to find themselves in that aisle quite often. That is how I find a lot of their stuff is I know to look for the weird aisle that has a few random supplements, protein bars, like all that random stuff. Oh, and by the way, diet food. And that's where I find it. But you can also find it on Amazon. Now, someone mentioned um, still cut cut oats, which I do for breakfast from time to time. Mm -hmm. I hate making them because it takes time lot of time um are those on the list i can't remember they should be if they're not i'm gonna have to add them for sure oats oops uh rolled oats old-fashioned oats those are good uh it's got to be added it looks like um yeah i'm good with old-fashioned rolled oats i'm good with steel cut oats my favorite way and this is a video i posted a long time ago um i'll probably have to do a new one I do steel cut oats in my instant pot and it cooks it faster. (gasps) And then I freeze them in my muffin tin. So then I have these little frozen oatmeal pucks. And then in the morning when I want steel cut oats, I just grab a puck out of the freezer and I grab a handful of frozen berries while I'm at it. I add some milk and then I just nuke it all in the microwave. Done. Well, awesome. I love the idea of making stuff and then being able to, like grab it quickly. Mm-hmm. It seems like every yeah. morning for me, it's like, hey, how much time do I have? That determines what I'm going to make for for uh, my first meal. I don't really call it breakfast because right. I don't eat it till like 11 a.m. Um, during a break at work. Oh, okay. But I okay. have a time limit. So I'm kind of like, uh-oh, a meeting went late. This one's going early. It'll be starting soon. What can I make? So the idea of being able to do that is great. Um, Grains. That's another thing a lot of people are confused about is fitting grains into their renal diet. 
I, I think a variety of grains are really great to include. I mean, pasta, we're having pasta for a dinner sign. I'm super excited. Um, pasta is really, really good. We've got uh, quinoa. We've got couscous, which I feel like is so underutilized, even for myself personally. I really enjoy all of those kind of grains. And again, these are good carbohydrates. So you want to have a variety. And you can even go from whole wheat or whole grain to white um, or, or the the white grain, the white kind every now and then, you want to switch back and forth, that's totally fine. The benefits, the pros and cons between them, we have our whole grains that have the fiber, so it'll help us stay full longer, but it also has a little more potassium, it has that phosphorus, it's organic, most likely, if you're getting it just like a regular package of dried. Um, so those are the pros and cons. The white grains that has less sodium, less phosphorus, well, I can't say less sodium, less phosphorus, less potassium, but it also doesn't have that fiber because that was stripped away too. So you can do a mixture, you can do whole grain one night, white the other night, whatever you prefer, but there's plenty of options for you. And my other favorite grain is popcorn. I love popcorn. I think it's mm -hmm. a fantastic snack. And it has fiber, so win-win. Yes. Someone asked earlier, they're like, hey, is popcorn okay without all the butter and salt? And I put, yes, good fiber. <laughs> I bought this collapsible silicone container on mm -hmm. Amazon. It has a silicone lid, and I just take real popcorn seeds, buy a big giant thing yeah. of it. You pour a little bit of it in there. You set the lid on it, put it in the microwave, and it pops up a huge thing of popcorn. And then I like to add like maybe a little bit of garlic or something or some some cayenne peppers or or lime. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. uh, dehydrated lime. I love that the little lime like sauce. Oh, the true lemon or true yes, lemon. Yes, the true lime. Oh, mm -hmm. put that yeah. on popcorn. It's like holy cow. And chili powder. Yes, chili powder. That's what I meant to say earlier. Mm. Chili powder. Yeah. So and my good. daughter even loves that. She's like, Dad, make it spicy. Oh, that's great. Now we're getting at the top of the hour. So I want to try to jump to some of the, you know, we've got, we're not even halfway through the categories. Um, someone asked about eggs, which can you address those and that they are on your list? Yes. So eggs are something that you can have if you choose to have them. They're an animal protein. So I would say be careful, make sure that this goes back to that individualized I personally, working with my clients, recommend uh, more focus on the plant-based diet. If you choose to have eggs in your diet, just be aware that the yolk is more, it, that's the nutrient powerhouse. That has most of the nutrients, including good and bad ones. So it is the center for phosphorus, but it's also the center for healthy fats and for fat-soluble vitamins. The egg white is very, very low phosphorus. So if you are worried about your phosphorus, if you have high phosphorus and you still like eggs, maybe switching to egg whites would be a good option for you to help control that phosphorus amount. But you won't get the healthier fats. You won't, you won't get uh, the vitamins that you would get from the yolk. So it's something that you can include. It's a source of protein. So there's a lot of factors. So every time I say yes or no, I don't know if I'll say no, but every time I say yes to something, I want you guys all to remember there's so many factors involved. So it depends on what is important, what you need to focus on. So just take that with um, a grain of um, pepper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not salt. And for those that <laughs> asked about butter, the, the list, the link, which is posted here, it's also in the description. It's on plant I, it's hard for me to aim for that plantpoweredkidneys.com website under blog yes butter is on there but always be careful with mm -hmm. some butters have a lot of salt those used to be my favorite with salted butter and it just comes down to portion control um someone right. had mentioned that they bought an air fryer awesome um uh, i use so i used to own a restaurant back Oh, it feels like forever ago now. And one of the things we did was we always had fresh baking cookies right up front. And we used a convection toaster oven, which is technically what an air fryer is. And we still have, we sold the restaurant. I'm like, no, we're taking that thing home. That thing cost a fortune. And I love it because of the cookies. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy to make amazing cookies in it. But I use it 
every single day. My wife uses it. My kids know how to use it. And they use the air fry setting and they'll put stuff in there. They make it. They're not adding extra grease. We're not on the stove making a mess. It's amazing what all you can cook in those. And they don't have to be gigantic. It just sits on the counter. It's actually smaller than our microwave. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you, if there's a vegetable that you're not sure about, you don't know if you're going to like air fry it and find out because that is a pretty good way to find out how you're going to like it. I love air frying veggies. And I saw, and I believe it was on the plant powered kidneys group on Facebook today, someone had sliced up zucchini and mm. cooked it in there. And I was like, holy cow, I love zucchini. I'm going to try that. Probably this, I got to buy that some more. So good. My kids eat it. We chop it all up. Zucchini, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, cucumbers, they don't last in our house. They go so fast. <laughs> and apples. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good, though. That's great. And let's see. Um, uh, let me look at a few more of these questions because we are coming up to the top of the hour. Um, I know. Let's see. I think we've done good on many of the questions. There is a section, everybody, it talks about dairy, dairy substitutes, um, because avoiding animal proteins is a good direction to go. You know, there is no mm -hmm. one diet like this is it. Download it. This is the mm -hmm. perfect diet. But eating more plants, going more plant based has been shown to be uh, great for those of us with kidney disease. So. Looking at these dairy alternatives is great. And even if that's where you just start to phase out or to reduce down the amount of animal protein you eat, that's a good method. Cheese, lots of cheeses to choose from. Uh, let's see, is the one that I eat on here? I eat a um, Swiss, which I do not like Swiss cheese. So that's two things about it. One is it's low sodium. It's not on here. I don't see it on here, but it's the one I go for. It's low sodium, and I hate the taste of it, so I am never encouraged to use most or much of it. <laughs> and yeah, I <laughs> and the taste is potent. It's very strong to me. It's like oh, so that's the, that's my cheese whenever I need cheese. Oh yeah, I yeah I cheese is a slippery slope. I think for so many people um, about how much they could or should have. And so oftentimes I recommend, well, maybe just cut it out entirely for a while and see how your labs look without it. And then bringing it back in, one of the first cheeses that I uh, will suggest would be goat cheese because it's very, uh, it's not acidic like many cheeses are that they have a lot of acid to them. So something like goat cheese is, is a good go-to for a lot of people and goat cheese is good. So I like that one. Yep. I, I like the foods, it's going to sound weird, but I like the foods that I do not like because that I'm not tempted to overindulge in them. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I would not be a good person with a big box of chocolates in front of me. Um, <laughs> unless they're all dark chocolate and coffee flavored, then I'd be like, yeah, I'm not, not even going to touch them. But if they're like regular oh, chocolates, whatever that yellow box is that, you know, when you're a kid, you always get for your dad, <laughs> you know, whenever it's his birthday. Oh, my goodness. I could sit huh. me down from one of those. We'd be in trouble. You also have a whole <laughs> section about beverages and fluid requirements and restrictions. Could you actually mm -hmm. touch on fluids um, as far as like staying hydrated and fluid restrictions? Because people are often confused how you know how much fluid they need to drink. So this is another one, kind of like protein. The spectrum is really, really big across the board with CKD. So there are people that need to be super careful with how much they drink because their kidneys aren't able to get rid of that extra fluid. We go to the bathroom, we urinate if we have too much fluid. In some cases that doesn't happen. And then it collects in the body, it causes edema, higher blood pressure, swelling, and then problems with the heart because the heart's pumping through all that extra fluid. Mm -hmm. But we also have people with kidney issues that need to drink so much and they feel like they can't drink enough. 
And that usually comes from their doctor when they say you need to have a lot of water. Some of those people could be those who have kidney stones who need to prevent kidney stones. It could be people who have certain medications that they need to stay hydrated because of the medications. There's a lot of different reasons, but you really want to be sure to find out from your doctor specifically, what do I need to pay attention to when it comes to my fluids? And if they say it doesn't matter, you're good where you're at, then just drink to thirst, drink to a standard goal of about half your weight. But if they give you anything outside those parameters, that's when you wanna be really, really careful. And remember, anything that is liquid, anything that you put out in the parking lot in Arizona in July that melts, that counts as fluid. And that's, I wanna say almost everything, but yeah. But really like yogurt, jello, pudding, any type of drink that all counts as fluid. And that's something that you wanna pay attention to with, uh, with what you, you choose for your fluids. Yeah, very, very important. And and I want to clarify one thing because I, I get a lot of people email me about it. And some of my old videos, I talked about, hey, my doctor told me drink half your body weight in ounces. That means if you weigh 200 pounds, the standard would be 100 ounces, not 100 mm-hmm. pounds in ounces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some yeah, people... No mistakenly think that's what it is. I'm like, that's too much. That's crazy. Yes. That is way too much for anybody. (laughs) Now we are at the top of the hour. Um, I posted a link to the blog again in the, in the chat. So you guys could see it there. Click it bookmark it. Um, There's so much more information there. And the big takeaway, hopefully everyone got is, Holy cow, I can eat a lot. Not big portions, mm-hmm. but a lot of variety. There is yeah, a lot variety. we can choose from. Yeah, it's not a restrictive diet where you're saying, no, throw these foods away. Mm-hmm. We're just making choices and being really careful on portion sizes. You want a little mm-hmm. bit of butter, it's animal protein, but you can have a little bit of butter. You want some avocado, you know, look at how much potassium you have on in your, your diet and your allowance, you know, how much you can have mm-hmm. a day and add a little bit of potassium. You'll have a little bit of avocado. Don't go crazy. You know, you're not going to be eating five pounds of bananas as a snack or anything like that, but there's just so much. And once I realized that, and I started looking at food as nutrient, not mm-hmm. as bananas are no, but instead of new, nut- mm-hmm. I looked at nutrients. It became so easy to eat and be happy, you know, be happy and so much variety. Mm-hmm. And one last thing at the end of your, your list on your blog post, and we didn't get to this. There are menu ideas like, Hey, on this day, here's what you have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. Another day you got one, two, three, four, five, six, you got a week's worth of ideas here in the blog to help people kind of start realizing, Hey, food can still be fun. There's so much variety, you know, and having kidney disease doesn't mean you got to hate your meals. I love eating. I still do. (laughs) (laughs) No, everybody should enjoy their food. Everybody should love what they eat and, and really enjoy the whole part of it because food is meant to be good. I, I know I said eat to live and not live to eat, but it's still enjoy to live, <laughs> enjoy yes. the process. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you all get inspired to just be, be able to enjoy food more and to, to enjoy the variety that you can have. Yep. All right. I'm going to let you go. Cause I think your batteries just ran out on your, your earpods. So <laughs> But that's okay. They switched over to your other microphone. Hey, everybody. Jen will be back next Tuesday. I am back tomorrow night, Dr. Kasim. But we're going to talk about it's a new year, things you can do to help protect your kidney health. This is going to talk about things like staying hydrated, things to avoid, like ibuprofen, things like that. So join us tomorrow night for all sorts of great information. Oh, there's two more shows this week. Holy cow, this is a busy week. Oh, and the schedule for January 
is on dadvicetv.com. I just updated it about half an hour before this show with even more stuff. We have an amazing January just packed full of all sorts of information. You guys are going to get a great start to 2021 at you know helping your kidneys be the best that they can be. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen, for being here. Always informative. Always a great pleasure to have you. See you guys Thanks. in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye.